Let's solve a couple of questions on velocity and speed. For the first one, we have the instantaneous speed of an object at point P is 5 meters per second. Which of these describes the meaning of 5 meters per second most accurately? And it's uh, there's a note which says 1 nanometers, this is equal to 10 to the power minus 9 meters and 1 nanoseconds, it is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. Okay, pause the video, read the options and try this one on your own first. All right, hopefully you have given this a shot. Now we need to choose one answer. So let's start reading the options. The option, the first one says object covered five meters in a time interval of one second near point P. So let's say if this is point P, then in one second, the object covered five meters. And we need to think about if this statement is the most accurate description of of this one that the instantaneous speed of an object at point P is five meters per second. Now this could be the most accurate description if the object was moving with a constant speed, constant speed of five meters per second. Then we can say yes, that the object will cover five meters in a time interval of one second near point P. But we don't really know that. We just know the instantaneous speed of an object at point P. So just at the instant when the object is at point P, there the speed is 5 meters per second. We do not know what the speed is after point P or before point P. So we don't have that information. And therefore we cannot really say that the object will cover 5 meters in a time interval of 1 seconds. This is not the most accurate description of only this statement, instantaneous speed 5 meters per second. Second one says object covered 5 nanometers in a time interval of 1 nanoseconds near point P. So this would mean this would mean that before or after in a very 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 small time interval for 1 nanoseconds the object is covering a distance of 5 nanometers. This would mean so if if we write if we write 0 0.000 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 5 nanometers divided by 1 nanosecond 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 nanosecond so we can see still that the ratio still comes out to be equal to 5 meters per second so this could very well be true that the near point p if the instantaneous speed of an object at point p is 5 meters per second so near point p it is covering a distance of 5 nanometers in an interval of 1 nanoseconds so when talking about instantaneous speed, we need to look at the distance covered in a very, very small time interval of time around the point P to get an accurate picture. Now, the smaller the time interval, the more accurate our description. And since one nanoseconds is smaller time interval than one second, this option, this option is more accurate than the first option. In the first option, this statement will only be true if the object is moving with a constant speed. But if the speed of an object is changing, then we need to look at the distance covered in a very small interval of time around point P to get an accurate picture. And the smaller the time interval, more accurate as a description. Option C says both descriptions are equally valid. Both descriptions would have been equally valid if the object was moving with a constant speed of 5 meters per second throughout. But if the speed of the object is changing, then we need to look at the distance covered in a small time interval around point P to get an accurate picture. So this one is also wrong. All right, let's move on to the next one now. Here we have a particle which is moving on a straight line path and its net displacement, its net displacement in a time t is zero. Choose the option that best describes the velocity v at time t and the average velocity v average in time t. We need to choose one answer. Again, pause the video, give this one a try. All right, so here we need to think about instantaneous velocity, that is a velocity at time t and the average velocity v average. And we know that net displacement is zero. So if we try to show this kind of motion, if there is, uh, let's say a particle moving in a straight line path, and then it moved somewhat ahead, then it started moving back. And here at this point, it, when it comes back to the to the initial position, the, the initial and the final position, they are, they are on top of each other. So net displacement is really just zero. Net displacement is zero. But we don't know if the object is at rest, rest or moving. We do not know if the object is at rest or if it's moving when it came back to its initial position. There is no information around that in the question. Okay, now let's see what the options are. 
first one says instantaneous velocity is zero and average velocity may or may not be zero well we don't know if the instantaneous velocity is zero or if it's if it's some number if it has a magnitude that information is not given in the question so first statement in itself is not right and the second one says v average may or may not be zero well v average what is v average let's write it down v average would be net displacement average velocity is really the net displacement divided by the time taken divided by the time taken net displacement here is zero so v average would just be zero so again the second option is also wrong b1 says v may or may not be zero and v average is zero we just discussed that v the instantaneous velocity at this point object could be moving it could be at rest we do not really know so the, the this part makes sense and v average is zero because the net displacement is zero so option b is the right one and we need to choose one answer but still let's look at the other two options both v and v average may or may not be zero well this is true for instantaneous velocity because it could be moving or at rest but v average is zero we just calculated it and the last one says both v and v average are equal to zero again this is wrong because v we do not know if instantaneous velocity at that particular time instant at this very instant we do not know if it is zero or if if it has some magnitude so v average is zero but v is not and therefore option d is also wrong you can try more questions from this exercise in this lesson and if you're watching on youtube do check out the exercise link which is added in the description